subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Phone tennis and iPhone. 10s max somebody call them the tennis rackets you know because of the way it sounds some call it the XS, like as in as excess whatever call it whatever you want maximus prime over here i've had these things for about three weeks since launch day and i want to explain to you Ooh, that exposure sorry about that i want to explain to you how they've been to use like in the real world so what has it been like to actually just have these both and maybe this can help you decide should i get the iphone 10s or should I get the iPhone 10s Max? Because, you know, while they are a little bit different in size, they're pretty similar devices. So beginning with the iPhone 10s, I want to talk about the design. It feels like an iPhone 10. So if you don't need the upgraded cameras, save yourself the money. Go get yourself a secondhand iPhone 10. Trust me on this one. The only real upgrade here and that is really felt is the cameras. You can give me all that 15%, 50% GPU increase. In the real world, most people are not going to notice this. And I'm pretty sure if a person can buy a phone like this, they can likely buy a laptop to do actual editing on, to do video editing and stuff like that. However, if you absolutely need the power, you might still like the design here on the iPhone 10s. The design over here is basically identical to the iPhone 10s and the iPhone 10. And after three weeks, I can tell you after the newness has worn off, this one still feels like the more dense, the more solid, the more premium device in the iPhone 10s Max. So if you're looking for a phone that definitely feels like you got over a thousand dollars in your hand, that's the 10s Max. Get this one. It definitely has that more premium solid feel. And that's not because the materials, they both have the solid same stainless steel, but there's more weight on the iPhone 10s Max. I want to discuss the handling experience. Now, both of these, if you are not used to a larger display, is going to feel like a stretch to get to the top. The notification center is up here. Not sure why they didn't implement it somewhere at the bottom, but it's up here now. So if you have smaller hands, the reach, even on the smaller 10s, will be a little bit harder than some of your prior phones. Now, swiping through is no big deal. It's pretty narrow side to side, but reaching those top applications in the corner could be a stretch. So you will be doing this a lot using reachability. And that's only amplified over here for the iPhone XS Max. Now, when this device right here, if you swipe down, basically you have to do this a lot more because, oh man, look at the reach up there. Woo, that's way up there on the iPhone XS Max. So this guy is a tall device. You've seen some of those memes and pictures of really long phones back in the day. It's coming true here with the 10s max and it would be nice to have like a fingerprint here so we can swipe down maybe pull down them notifications like this guy right here for example but that doesn't exist on this device probably won't so the iphone 10s max and handling just a very big device wide and heavy okay so i want to talk about the displays between both of them they both have these gorgeous amoled displays on here and they get very bright over 700 nits or something like that at their max now they're tuned to be very accurate so they look very similar in terms of colors to prior iphones but you cannot get over that this is still a samsung manufactured panel and it does look great so one thing i do want to mention is that if you're reading and stuff like that like doing articles reading articles here on the iphone 10s max for example this one from mashable this guy is just going to be a much better reading experience because it's just less scrolling to do here now, where the iphone 10s display shines is when you're using one-handed things like doing social media hopping in between applications that's when i really enjoy the iphone 10s display just scrolling through one hand you know hopping into your messages doing some reading stuff like that it's pretty fun to use the iPhone XS. Where the XS Max shines again though is in video. So if you're watching video, just look at this canvas. It's absolutely massive here on the iPhone XS Max. And after three weeks, when it comes to video, I'm going to the XS Max every single time. Now that's not to say that video watching can't be enjoyable here for the iPhone XS, it can, but with this display, it's just smaller and not as large. So if you're a media goer, get the iPhone 10s max i think if you're a more mobile user like you're on the go constantly i think the 10s will suit you a little bit better it's just even for people with big hands it's still pretty comfortable like i got big hands and this phone is still very comfortable to use now one last area where the display wins for the 10s max is going to be in browsing safari shows a little bit more content on display it's not super noticeable but definitely shows a little bit more content than what you would see on the smaller iPhone 10s. Okay, so both my iPhone 10s and 10s Max are updated to iOS 12.1 and after three weeks I got to tell you the software has been fantastic for the iPhone 10s and 10s Max. Very fluid, 
very fast, just about perfect, which actually makes the phone a little bit boring because there's nothing really to talk about because it just works. Now, I know there's been a lot of gates about charge gate. I actually never had the charge problem on my iPhone when it comes to like plugging it in and wouldn't charge every charger I tried worked also that wi-fi issue i didn't really experience that much either with the software but i know some people were so that has been fixed here in this latest version now there's another bug that came out that people are saying that their messages on ios 12 this goes for pretty much all iphones are being sent to people randomly and it has a thing to do with the apple id i've heard so i don't know who's having that issue i haven't had it yet but that can be very awkward if you're sending out messages to people you don't want to like an ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend for example what really shocks me after three weeks is that there's really nothing that takes advantage of the 10s max's size it's literally just a jumbo 10s like there's no landscape mode on here i know i know face id doesn't work in landscape mode i get that fact but still now you do have the ability to put this guy in zoom that's one different feature here but it's not like a huge zoom so it doesn't really make too much of a difference you can zoom those icons but so there it goes you can see they are bigger but they're not like massive like they were on the iphone 6 for example so there you go you can do that can't do that on the iphone 10s software i should discuss also how some applications actually a lot of applications are not optimized properly for the max model so video shop for example if i go to make a new video you can see you see right there how that text is cut off a lot of developers apps are just not ready for this display you know they just weren't ready to make apps yet for this one but over here for the 10s if you use a similar application because the 10 has been out for so long many developers have already got on board and fixed this problem for last year's phone so you can see you can see start new video right there so you've seen right there optimization issues are everywhere for the 10s max especially in third-party applications so keep that in mind now i do want to touch on the landscape applications because the iphone 10s max does have landscape apps just not on the home screen for as a whole though has been reliable fast and what you expect from ios just it's more of the same don't expect it to be much different besides the fact that it's a gesture system and if you had an iphone 10 you already know what that was here for these devices that's about all that would be different if you're coming from a home button iphone now since we we're talking about software let me talk about performance and this right here doesn't really say anything about performance but you've seen my performance tests already and the iphone 10s and 10s max have been basically blowing away the competition in performance as is expected these phones are beasts in performance a12 bionic chipset even with four gigs of ram they're blowing away the competition now where the competition is still winning though is probably an ability to hold more applications in the background like the note 9 has eight gigabytes of ram it can hold more apps without reloading because these have four gigs of ram about this so my take on the performance is do not come to these phones just to see a massive leap in performance unless you're coming from an iphone 6s and below if you're coming from those you will see a leap in performance but if you're coming from anything from a 7 7 plus 8 8 plus or an iphone 10 don't come to these for performance. You're not going to be happy with paying $1,000 to realize the performance is not that much different in your everyday real world experience. That's how I felt after three weeks. One thing I should mention about the performance though is that 120 hertz touch sample rate is super quick. There's only one phone that's smoother feeling than this and that is the Razer phone too with the 120 hertz refresh rate as well. It has both of them. So this is probably the second most smooth feeling phone on the planet next to the Razer phone. So let's discuss battery life. iPhone 10 and 10s max after three weeks i've been pretty impressed with both of these on the battery i've used them both separately on separate days so you see how they would last and they both get me through a day now the thing is is the iphone 10s would finish with like 47 this one would finish with like 63 so this guy is definitely significantly better than the 10s in terms of battery life like an hour hour and a half and that could be a reason to justify buying the 10s max over the iphone 10s let me not forget the audio experience on this device now the iphone 10s and 10s max have some great speakers they're very full and they're very loud so let's go ahead and play one now you can cover it up and you can still hear it very full and clear. So with the audio, there's only one phone that could probably take these down, and that is the Razer Phone 2. Now, if you want headphone jack, you don't get that here. I mean, it's been expected. You haven't had it since the iPhone 7, but still very good external audio. I'm very pleased with that. If you're watching videos with somebody side by side, you're going to love how loud 
the speakers on these phones do get. So after three weeks, let me talk about the camera experience. And I got to tell you that the camera at first, I'm like, this is going to be another iPhone camera, just like the rest of them, barely giving me any update. And I was totally wrong because this year with the new smart HDR, the photos on the 10s and 10s Max are just absolutely gorgeous. Now, I'm not going to go over this and talk about them. Here, you got portrait mode, you got square, you got pano. We know the iPhone software by now. They shoot 4K 60p. They have the new smart HDR mode, which isn't able to be toggled on and off. But the big thing here is that it just combines those exposures and picks out like one of the best photos. So you can see right here. Some people are saying it's too beautified. It makes the skin tones look too soft, things like that. But video looks absolutely great. And here I shot my entire iPhone XS Max review on these cameras, but take a look at these samples and judge for yourself how much of an improvement these cameras are. Let's go. So lastly, let me get on to call quality. Some people have been saying, I have some connection issues with this device. I haven't had those. Pretty good. You know, I got T-Mobile here in Chicago. Pretty good service here. These devices just worked for me. Like, I had no issues with the call quality. People sounded clear on both ends. And speakerphones are ridiculously loud. So I really don't have much to complain about when it comes to their call quality. So after three weeks, my honest experience with these iPhones have been nothing short but pretty amazing. The most impressive thing to me has been the cameras. The cameras, the cameras, the video, wow. It is just incredible what these phones can do, especially that portrait depth effect after the fact. It's just amazing. So if you want incredible camera upgrade from your iPhone, I think any iPhone before it doesn't even come close to these except for the iPhone 10, 8 Plus, those come kind of close, but still these are beating every iPhone before it. So if you want a better camera in your phone, these are the iPhones to pick up, even over the iPhone 10R, which has one camera versus two on here. Now, speaking of that 10R, I think that is gonna give these phones a run for their money as it's gonna be basically the same phone, but has an LCD screen. But we know from the past that Apple has done really good when it comes to their LCD technology on their screens. You buy the iPhone 10S or the 10S Max, and it comes down to a couple of factors. A lot of people just dismiss it as it's just size. Get one that's bigger or smaller. No, they're not exactly the same. This one has a smaller battery. This one has a larger battery. You can see more content in Safari on the iPhone 10S Max. It technically has more pixels, so it is a more you know, technologically advanced display. Yes, you can say same pixels per inch, but still there's more pixels on the iPhone XS Max. So if you want the most superior iPhone you can get, it's the XS Max, just be ready to handle that large size. If you want 99.5% of everything the iPhone XS Max offers, cheaper and a little bit more manageable, you can't go wrong with the XS. It's still gonna be a fantastic piece of gear. And the last thing I wanna mention is the thing that's really hurting these phones is the prices really. I think that's the only thing that's gonna hurt the sales of these devices, they could do much better if the prices were even a couple hundred dollars less than they currently are. But that's not the way of the current market. I mean, the Galaxy Note 9 is over $1,000. The P20 Pro, when it came out, was over $1,000. I'm sure the Mate 20 Pro is going to be over $1,000. The Pixel 3 XL is pushing 1000 if you get the 128 gigabyte. Phones like the Honor 8X, the Honor 8X Max. But where these still shine is that ecosystem iOS and just having, you know, that stainless steel is just